Hello. Welcome to episode one of the OCD Backpacker series. We'll dive right in. So we have a number of things we're going to cover today. Number one, we're going to talk about the Adventure Circle, uh, which is actually a helix. Gives us a six-part process in which we analyze, or actually create, um, analyze, execute, and then uh, rebuild and improve. It's a cycle. Part two, we'll talk about uh, two of those steps, the first two, the idea and the planning. We will uh, review two maps of the Superstition Wilderness area and the benefits of both. And we will define the upcoming trip into the superstitions um, that we have planned. Uh, the bulk of this video is going to be products and reviewing products that I will be taking or might not be taking with me. All of these products are going to be uh, listed in chronological order, hopefully with timestamps, so you can jump to them and see the review on each individual or jump to the page where the item is uh, up for sale. Um, I'm going to go to the depth of uh, weighing everything, uh, dimension, providing dimensions when possible or prudent. Also, I'm going to point out star products. I'm going to point out, uh, I'm going to rate each product. Uh, star products would be exceptional uh, products or something very unique. And then I'll rate products that have ultralight qualities, ultralight approvals. Uh, also, comfort is, is a big other side of the approval spectrum. So all those things balance out to a lot of metrics. However, these metrics, I think, will help guide you in uh, making some product decisions in whatever direction in life you are taking your hiking, backpacking experience. So um, all of these things, like I said, will be listed in the Google Sheet. You can download that, uh, build off, create your own, whatever. I organize things very uh, specifically. Uh, in those product videos, I'll be breaking things down into things like Clothing, personal effects, uh, water systems, cooking systems, sleeping systems, uh, survival and medical kits, stuff like that. So this is episode one. Let's go to the Adventure Helix itself. So the way that I process trips with the segmented, so to speak, in order to have kind of definitive action within each cycle. So first starts, first step of any trip is an idea. Ideas are easy. Um, everybody's got them. That's how everything has to start. So everything starts with an idea. Then you get into step two is planning. <clears throat> that, that can go into depths. It can take hours, weeks, months, whatever the trip necessitates. So step two is planning. Step three is execution. And so that's the trip itself. Step four after the execution is a post-mortem, meaning kind of a retrospective or a review of the trip, the execution itself, the plan, and maybe even questioning the idea itself in the beginning. Um, after that, we repair. There's maintenance and repair that we all should be uh, continuously doing to keep the equipment safe, you know, or, or, or I should say keep the equipment in good working order so that we're safe. And then there's improvement. That's step six. Now, I'll show you kind of how this cycle works. But what, what you'll really see is that it starts a continuous cycle of improvement that kind of spirals into a helix. And so... Even while you're on your current trip, you're probably taking notes or at least wanting to on how you can improve next time. So it's more of a fluid kind of continuous, continuous improvement, continuous flow model. And so that, that's kind of the fun, the fun part of it. And, you know, this, this brings me to, you know, it's a continuous model. It goes, repeats ad infinitum, right? Um, or not, right? Uh, it ends when one of us doesn't, or when the backpacker doesn't survive. And so that's bringing into uh, backpacking, OCD backpacking, uh, rule number one, survive. That's what we're there to do, we're there to survive. Now we can thrive and have a bunch of other layers on top of that, but really, ultimately, the stuff we're doing is we want to survive the event and we want to come out better for it. So uh, this continuous process helps us do that. These are the two maps that I would recommend. You can find these. Uh, we found them at REI. Uh, I'm sure you can find them online. Uh, the big map uh, is Beartooth Publishing, Superstition Wilderness, and the Green Trails map, uh, Superstition Wilderness, is uh, here on the right. 
What are the differences of the two? Well, this one weighs 3.5 ounces. This one weighs 0.9 ounces. This one's much larger. Um, this one has topography details that are pretty cool. The shading's awesome. And this is really helpful if there's snow. We'll get into that later. But it's big. Unruly, when you fold it out, it's, it's pretty tall. So not really something you just want to whip out and just get a quick view of the map. So that's what comes, this one comes in handy. Now, like I said, this is missing topography, but this also has the added benefit of some of the archeological sites, like cliff dwellings and some other uh, kind of uh, human interest points that this one doesn't seem to reference. Um, those are the two maps. As you can see, the surface area of both these maps is, is quite different. Um, both of these are currently facing um, the east side of the Tonto National Forest, which contains the Superstition Wilderness Area. So, that is this whole area here. Um, superstitions. All right. So, uh, our plan is, is actually quite simple. Um, and let me give you a little background to, for context. We have been hiking with this group for decades We've been coming to superstitions quite often over the last decade. So there was two groups, one group of 13, they're heading in Saturday, and then there's our group of two heading in Thursday. So we're taking a different route in than our um, group, other group will be, but we have a rendezvous point over here at a place called Revis Ranch. So our plan for this four night, four day, four night, is to get to the trailhead as efficiently as we can on Thursday night to a place called Campaign Trailhead um, in a, next to Revis Mountain School. And so that is a significant point. We've got a little bit of history there. We're gonna try to revisit. From there, um, our goal that evening is to uh, hike southward for a couple miles, 2.1, um, another two, Go about four to five miles, ending up somewhere along the Fireline Trail Thursday evening. Our goal then was to get to Revis Ranch Friday morning, set up camp, do a little adventuring over here, uh, looking for circle stones, um, then meeting our crew um, coming in on Saturday from Apache side, uh, Saturday uh, at two o'clock. So we'll spend two evenings here and then as a group of uh, up to 15, which is the max allowed, we were gonna exit Monday morning. And that is the plan. Switching to the other map, just for visuals, uh, this is the Fireline Trail uh, and coming up to Campaign Trailhead on this map. So the goal would be to come down here, connect with Fireline, and then get up to this area uh, the following day after we drop camp uh, near uh, Revis Ranch at a predetermined location. So, four nights, uh, and tell you the conditions, it is lots of water. There's snow on the mountains. There's snow up there. So, lots of water, not worried about uh, water conservation per se too much. I am bringing, um, uh, we are both bringing enough to uh, substance off very little. So, it'll be a four-nighter. We'll be bringing in all of our food, of course and uh, backpacking or estimated travels about 21 miles, not including, eh, including a little bit of fun travel. So uh, this will be in February of 2023. And looks like we're missing, a, we're coming off a storm and we might be uh, before a, a following storm. So those are the conditions. We're looking at nighttime temperatures, uh, 40 degrees, 35 at the lowest daytime 80s 70s so that's the current kind of outlook we'll see what happens my exploded backpack before you represents about 35 years of learning growth iteration uh, all with the goal of maximizing uh, my personal joy and comfort um, when i'm in remote wilderness areas like i'm about to go into again um, been backpacking fishing hunting and climbing all my life been across the United States, uh, shy about seven of those. So I visited most of the United States, including Alaska, but not including Hawaii. Beautiful areas, man. Beautiful places in the United States, beautiful people. 
you get on the road and you, you find that out pretty quick. Been a few remote places internationally as well with backpack, business, pleasure, love travel. So this video is intended for kind of a smaller group of fanatical friends of mine who enjoy this type of kind of deep dive. I gander there are a few other nutters out there that uh, might appreciate the effort I put forth in this video. I do a lot of spreadsheet stuff, do a lot of planning, do a lot of reflection. I also do a lot of just kind of field testing and stuff like that. But you know, this does demonstrate how I approach, you know, product management or any other kind of thing um, in life. You know, there's a misnomer out there. God is in the details is the true statement. And the one thing I do love are details because details add up as you can see with weight, cost, things like that. This is not a cheap endeavor, nor is it a quick one I have learned. There's only so much you can improve before, you know, budgetary concerns take, take grip. But, you know, in reference to these videos, I think the retrospective is something that is really valuable that I learned in work life that is definitely carried through in analysis and day-to-day -day stuff like survival gear and, and travel and, and this kind of extreme backpacking. So today I'm going to be... Uh, Reviewing my loadout. This is a four day, 20 plus mile trek through the superstition wilderness region of Arizona. My old travel companion, business buddy, old friend from college, Daniel, is going to be joining me. We're being dropped off around 4 p.m. just south of Roosevelt Lake at Rivas Mountain School, Thursday, February 15th. From there, we'll proceed around 1.2 miles heading east, then south by southeast little kind of trail that runs down that direction and then we've got some we've got some choices to make we got a couple paths there's a few few places to go uh, along the way so we have a few alternative paths but we, we anticipate that that first night we're going to travel two to six miles uh, before deciding on where to sleep uh, the next morning we're going to make our way to Revis Ranch pretty historical place and uh, the following day we'll at a pre to find location near Revis Ranch, we're gonna be meeting 12 or 13, maxing out our, our uh, group capacity at 15 uh, Saturday afternoon. So we'll have two additional nights there and then um, all 15 of us um, or less will be trekking out of there uh, eastward, kind of east, a little northeast, east by east, northeast, uh, yeah, located at Apache Lake where our, our uh, cars are located. So uh, temperature ranges, uh, looking at the reports, looking at 40 to 75 Fahrenheit. I'll put some Celsius centigrade scale up there for you. When I circle back, uh, the intention is to do field testing on each of my high graded items, perhaps as much as I can. And I get to test out the solar kind of generative properties, see, see how much uh, juice I can get out there. While I'm out there, but I'll do product uh, videos on each individual thing so that uh, somebody can use this as more of a table of contents, so to speak, and then have the links from the table of contents in the description below actually launch the actual product uh, reviews individually so you don't have to scroll through. Um, so they'll be locatable in either way. But yeah, so this will serve as a table of contents. Uh, what I'm going to do next is insert the, the, the weighing videos. Item one in uh, the superstition hikes is going to be a Patagonia wool beanie and it is currently weighing in two point one five ounces. Uh, I have this rated at an eight I've had it for about a decade. There's nothing truly wrong with it. it. I don't think it's very warm, so to speak. It is a type, a thinner type of uh, material. However, it's a great wool hat. I can't, I can't uh, say anything bad about it because it's lasted so long. So I'm really stoked about that. So I would say 
nice solid eight on that. Uh, I'll probably have it forever, but it's not the warmest. So the generalized temperature range that we're looking at is about 40 to 75 or so. Um, this is going to occur in two weeks. So the wool hat will work just fine for those, and it'll work down to uh, below freezing conditions. But for those temperature ranges, the, the wool beanie is great. This, however, is one of only seven items in my entire pack, and I'll be counting those items as we go, as I break each pack down. Um, but this is also an eight. However, dun dun dun, I'm putting star factor on this for a number of reasons. Most of them are, are, are just, I love this hat. This is the, I've purchased no less than a half a dozen of these. The other ones have either been given away or get taken away um, by friends who like them and they're welcome to it. I think it's just a great representation of a Colorado company. I love the logo. Um, it's bold, it's in your face. It's not typically my style. You can see it's got really nice thick applique work. Uh, it's got a band. I would say for hiking, I'd like to put a, uh, a brass grommet right in the middle there so that I could latch this onto a uh, carabiner. But that'd be the only like modification. This design itself is just super cool, and that's why it gets a star. Uh, Axles is a company that I've bought tons of socks for um, and from, and then also these hats. The hats are just super cool. Anyways. Very nice addition. It's not really, I'd say, anything special as far as performance per se. In fact, it's probably just a normal 7 or something, but because of the cool factor of it, I put it at an 8. But it's got a star factor, so um, I adore this hat. It's going to go with me. Yeah, I know you're probably saying right now, and my friend Tamis is saying it, you're going to weigh everything. Yeah, pretty much I'm going to weigh everything. And uh, the reason I do that is uh, because... I really do like the science of it, breaking it down, seeing where I can save space, time, money, because um, all those things are related to one another. But it's fun just seeing how much true weight I pack in and pack out with these post, um, pre and post measurements. So yeah, I'm going to measure the glasses, Tamis, and uh, you're going to like it. Coming in at a solid nine is this buff UV uh, bug neck gaiter. Uh, weighs nearly nothing, 1.35 ounces. It's made of this fantastic stretchable material, goes around your neck. This thing is a solid nine. I, I don't even know why it might not be a 10 because it's just so amazing. Um, why is it amazing? In the cold, it comes up and you can use it as a kind of a windshield and a cold shield layer. But otherwise, this is a life-saving product. Like, this is great to keep the sun off your neck. And so even if you're wearing a baseball cap, like that non-high performance, uh, you know, hat that I love, if I'm wearing that in the desert, I'll be sure and put this behind my neck so it'll cover the back of my neck. Um, one of the most, yeah, truth is, is skin cancer is real. We, we lost a friend about a year and a half ago to skin cancer, Jay. Um, yeah, it can hit anybody, so get get your skin checked. And honestly, up here at Elevation in Colorado, it's like 3x the, the bad rays that can cause that kind of cancer. So I would say that this is, is just one of those amazing products uh, that I, I keep and I use daily um, on my hikes uh, around Highlands Ranch. So I would highly recommend that this product uh, or something similar to it. You can get any of this. It doesn't really matter brand, I don't think. However, this brand's got some cool patterns. I just happen to like the color of this one. And uh, it had some UV uh, added properties to it. So I would highly recommend of any any hiker of any experience uh, one of these if they haven't experienced one. It's just a great little utilitarian piece of uh, product. Another really high rated product is this Ex Officio Insect Shield Synthetic Long Sleeve UV Shirt. Now, I've, I've worn this to the tops of 14ers um, and also in the jungles of Nicaragua. I love this shirt. The only downfall of making it not a 10 is it's just ugly. There's nothing to it. Um, it's like a celery color, bland, but it covers your limbs. It's got great coverage. 
double layered protection, kind of a rip stop material. Never, never had a rip, never had an issue. Uh, wicks moisture wonderfully. Doesn't have, it's just like odor resistant as well. So it's just a wonderful do all shirt. It's just ugly. So I may have to do something about that on this trip. However, great shirt. Can't can't knock it. I've had it for at least six or seven years at this point. Solid nine. This is probably top three, but certainly top seven. It's got a star. <clears throat> it's a cool interceptor hoodie in black. But I'll tell you something about this black. You may not be able to see it. Let's see if I can zoom perhaps. Try out the zoom function. It's got some, yeah, oh, this is fantastic. Look at that, and this camera. So it's got this like background brown, but at a distance it's black. It's just beautiful. This thing is beautiful. Um, I'm gonna have to break off and do a separate, just complete product breakdown on each one of these individually, because it's, it's worthwhile, especially with a product like this. I don't think they make this model anymore with the hood. I think that the Interceptor is now sans hood, which is a terrible decision. On their part I think this is probably one of the most ideal pieces of equipment I've ever experienced down to down to the feel down to everything about it the ergonomics of how it shapes to your hands uh, it's got the thumb holes so you can extend gloves through giving yourself like a barrier between that that shocking wrist cold that hits if you have a gap in your wrists and you get a big brisk wind coming through if you're like adjusting your poles nothing like that I hate that feeling so this has those, those hand, hand sets. Uh, it's beautiful color. It gets better with age. It's actually lost, a tw uh, let's see, a 20% of an ounce um, over time, just a defelting, I'm sure. Um, currently, the only issue I have is with the zipper. And as you can see, and I'm gonna watch this. I'm gonna zoom in. Zippers busted, um, whatever. I'm gonna test the cool, um, when I get back from this trip, I'm gonna test the cool, the Prana, and um, the, the Patagonia warranty repair policy. And I'll make a separate video just side by side with, I'll do it at the same time, so my request will be the same time. I'll have everything ready to to ship in a first class box or something ready to go, but uh, I'll do it all at the same time and see what the response cost turnaround time is. But um, yeah, no complaints. I mean, zippers are going to fail. That's not a, you know, it's probably from that KKY company or whatever that produces all the zippers in the world. I uh, can't fault them, but if they could replace it, that would be wicked cool. Um, we'll see. But anyways, yeah, this is a strong 10 plus, 10 star, um, star factor. It's just, fantastic uh i've had this for approaching seven years and i can just i just love it so you should too um cool call me next up here is one of the most beautiful pieces of equipment i've ever owned I'm a sucker for orange. I'm a sucker for, for green. I'm a sucker for this golden green sweater. It's just gorgeous. It's a formerly a Patagonia Performance Better Sweater hoodie. Um, it weighs in at 15.9 ounces. It's a solid Super 9. You know, if I didn't have that cool, this would be this would be in my bag. But I'm pulling it. Um, the reason being, it's like having two betta fish. Four day trip, this is a pound roughly. Um, I love it. It also has a zipper problem, however. And that zipper problem is the reverse. The bottom one uh, un come, comes undone. And so it actually kind of unzips from the inseam. And then you just unzip it and rezip it, but it's it's at the point of failure. So I love this product. I think it's gorgeous. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I think they'll, it just lacks I think it lacks uh, zippers and, and uh, kind of the extra pockets that the cool has. Now, 
I won't be able to do a side by side on the trail, but when I do my product kind of uh, evaluations and formally out there, and I'll break everything down one by one. Uh, you know, I, I only think that if these two sweaters had a baby, that would be the only way to make a better sweater. And it would be sort of like a hideous, it'd be sort of like Rockefeller having a child with like the Walmart family or something like it. There's a lot of ways to celebrate, but there's like a, a weird thing going on there. I think that would just be, it would be the most beautiful thing in the world or like an abomination. But until that happens, until they make babies, uh, yeah, this Patagonia, I can't knock it. It's gorgeous. It's beautiful. Uh, we'll put it in the zipper challenge. Although the Prana pants are more of a buckle slash cinch challenge, but similar, same. But yeah, uh, I highly recommend it. It's warm, it's great, it's thin, it's light, and it's gorgeous. We are reviewing some outdoor research or trail mix gloves in tapenade. As you can see, they're pretty light coming in at 1.8. Uh, these are large. The thing I like about these gloves in tandem with the Architerix is that I'll show you. These work as an insulation layer or standalone glove, which is good for ambient uh, ambient temperatures like the ones I'm going into. However, if it does get a little cold, knock the lights over these fit nicely still allow allows allowing still for articulation so um, got myself basically a dual layer system with these two sets of gloves in tandem with one another so actually it's 1.85 Alright. Weighing in at two ounces are the Architerix Vent Venta gloves in forage. Ugh. These are pretty fantastic. I was pointed this direction by a Leo at REI who does a deep snow avalanche recovery type stuff. And these are the gloves that he went with and he steered me to them. I can contest that they are great. I contest, I will attest to that they are great. I had, I've experienced these at 15 degree high wind conditions in a snowstorm. And they did keep my, my digits and my hands warm. I did have moments of putting them in my jacket, probably 50% of the time, but otherwise I was trekking with the poles and with the jacket kind of long sleeves on the, the jacket. Uh, these things performed great. They've got kind of a longer wrist that protects from that, that biting wrist cold. So I, I appreciate these gloves. I don't know how well they would be in like moving rocks and kind of use them as work gloves per se. I think they're more material is thin. I'd be afraid to rip them in those cases. So I don't see them as work gloves. Uh, I am carrying a second pair that are more of a trekking glove, but they're also not work gloves. So, but I don't anticipate looking for gold or digging, digging rocks out of rocks, in the superstitions. Um, but, you know, these 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 serve a purpose of keeping your hands warm in cold conditions. So, in the superstitions, we're looking at 40 degrees at night, 30, maybe, worst case, 20s. Um, these will be just fine, especially the fire camp layers, layers, layers. So. Great option, super light, love them. All right, for my hiking clothes and actually for my everyday uh, underwear, these me undies are absolutely worth it. I have 10, I, bought, I got 10 pair were bought to me by a friend of work and I've had them all ever since six years ago. They are like in, in perfect condition. Elastic's getting a little bit done but I mean six years has been quite fantastic so I'll never buy a different pair these have the um, slit for uh, the 
front, so these aren't the boxer briefs. These uh, have the, the added layer. And so, anyways, excited. These are going to be fun. Uh, I've enjoyed this brand. Highly recommended. These are a definite 10 on the scale of things that uh, I own. These are uh, REI Co-op midweight base layer bottoms weighing in at 8.25. Now, they served the job. Um, but here's the downside. They're not very form-fitting. They're fairly heavy. Um, they work, but they're slouchy. So I can't go bouldering with these. Um, namely because, well, I can. It's just uncomfortable. It's like extra fabric where it shouldn't be in the crotch, and it just sucks. So I, I think that there's room for improvement in my deck. I think this is probably something I'd look into some sort of capillary option from Patagonia or other some sort of kind of lightweight but possibly uh, could be, exist as its own as its own type of pant maybe like a a layered pant of sort but anyways this is uh, an okay piece of equipment it keeps you warm um, I'm super skinny I'm at 145 right now so going up with a 45 pound pack I'll be at 190 right uh slogging 10 miles going in i'll come out a lot lighter probably i'll probably be coming out at like 33 33 pounds uh realistically um so it'll be it'll be an expenditure of energy and consumption of lots of dehydrated and awesome crazy foods but for, for keeping warm whatever these are hiking clothes they work they're a great thermal layer when needed they're just not very form-fitting, so that's why it's a 7. Currently, uh, these pants are, are my favorite pants I've ever owned. Prada Adamson Winter Pant. I picked them up at the Prana uh, outlet, or dealer, whatever dealership. The Prana, um, the Prana store up in Boulder at the end of winter two years ago. Got two pair. Uh, roughly half off, which was fantastic. These are better than any other pants for a number of reasons. The material, it's like a, it's got a two, it's like a two ply, it's got a thin slate layer and a nice water repellent, uh, stretchy outer layer. It's got zippers on the legs instead of flaps, which are super nice. Keep the rain out. It just less things to get caught on. Um, they're non-convertible, but they do have roll-ups that allow you to roll the pants up and kind of button them. So you get like a three quarter version, which is fine. Um, not everybody's, you know, uh, I say a shorts type of guy. However, the only downside I found is I, I overused them. The black version, charcoal version snapped on the cinch. So that's gonna be part of the three product, three three company challenge and see what, see what the turnaround time is on repairs or replacement or whatever to see how they handle it but this is just a fantastic pair of pants and you know in our temperature range 40 to 75 this is great i don't need my my uh my layer my insulated layer but i'll bring it anyways just in case it can get down sometimes below freezing so if we get a flash cold or something no problem got back up but yeah the prana i just love them i think everybody who enjoys an outdoor kind of winterish pant would get a kick out of them. The reason they're not, oops, I put these as a 10. I'm taking them out of the 10 category and I meant to swap that, but these are a nine though. Um, I have I have tried on better pants, um, more suited, more focused pants. The Falcon Rod and Regisum Falfus. Starts with an F, FJ, I already killed it. But I think those might be contenders for a, a perfect 10. They're even better than these. However, these are just great every day. You know, the when you get into too technical, the material is sometimes a little bit uh, coarse and not for daily use. Whereas these are just really balanced in that as well. I just love the number of pockets because <clears throat> I have designations for each pocket and what goes in them. If I get three pockets, it throws me off. So I really do like these four pockets, four pocket systems. So 
yeah uh great great pants i'll do a, a a test in the field and show you all the the details of them uh when i'm out there uh, these certainly live up to their name darn tough micro crew socks wow 2.6 let's see what the weight is on these guys 2.45 on scale I'll be hiking in with these they're just great <coughs> you know I used to wear cotton uh, eco sock and I've never had issues but a good friend of mine call him the shaman who also does tours of the Grand Canyon deep for long durations he uh, he just swears by an old pair of old, old uh, synthetics blend and these are that these are just fantastic they're, they're short on the ankle but you know this is Arizona it's going to be a warmer hike especially where I'm used to like hiking around at 32 15 degrees stuff like that um, here in Colorado so for me uh, these are just going to be great um, I'll get into the other socks when we separate the bag itself but these are going in a uh, solid nine and they look cool for this hike, I have one major uh, area of improvement, and that is coming uh, from the Solomon Quest 4D 3T or GTX uh, boots. We've got Super Feet Green insoles. These are awesome, heavy winter hunting boots. For going on a brisk walk, 45 pounds in the desert at 40 degrees. These are heavy, overkill, and they just, they, they, I, I've had problems with them. Uh, last 14er I did, I sprained, I like dislocated my left, like some muscle or some muscle group in my left leg, it paralyzed like my left leg, so to speak. Uh, I had trouble articulating, so I stumbled and I had a hard time getting down that 14er. However, it's these boots. It's like having peg legs, you know? There's no articulation in the toes. It just really, it's like having your legs just wrapped in a like mummy suit and just bounced around. I just don't like the feel of them. They're too heavy. I can't run in them. Try to run and it's just, yeah, damaging. So this is, you know, two weeks away from the trip. I've got a major improvement on the way uh so i've been waiting for these for a while we'll see if we get them in time so yeah so this is something i i, I can't rate these high enough for hunting and for warmth and insulation i was at sub-zero with negative wind chill with my full hunting uh gear on a few years ago and my feet never got cold it's just they're wonderful for that so for a good, heavy hunting winter boot that'll get you up a mountain, for sure, these, if you're slow going, these are great. Um, but if you want something more articulating and a little more speedy, um, these are just too heavy. They weigh, these things weigh 55.7 um, ounces, which quickly, 55.7, divided by 16. Yeah, we're three and a half pounds between the two of them. That's just a lot. So these are getting pulled. I needed a pair of replacement boots. I, I, my other boots, like I mentioned before, the Solomons are great hunting, heavy hunting boots. They're fantastic for that. But I needed something that I could articulate more, get more kind of honestly a bridge on my foot. I want to be able to feel my toes, kind of use all my foot to help navigate terrain. Um, there's some really good low, uh, low cuff like sneakers out there, variants, trail runners, stuff that would definitely work. However, I'm not, I think that would be great for this trail because when we're going on something fairly, fairly uneventful, not a lot of rigid, you know, hand climbing or anything like that. So a normal pair of hiking shoes or kind of quasi, you know, 
hikers are going to suffice. But these for me, I think are are more for bigger bigger projects going up mountains. And they're gonna give me the traction and the agility that I need when I want to run down them. Because I do like to kind of get a jog going and just like gravity help and bounce off the path as I go down. So these will give me a better experience for that. I think there's an art to it. It's kind of like skiing, but being able to jog down the mountain is a fun thing. Nonetheless, I came in two colorways. Um, this will be its first maiden voyage on a real trip other than around the block. Um, so yeah, they had a colorway. Guess what? Matches my colors. Okay. The other one was this aqua blue. It was pretty too, but you know, like I said, it doesn't matter what you look like. You can look how you want to look. And I, I like orange and, and green when I'm camping. It's easy to see. So these are going to be my new boots. Going to start breaking them in on Wednesday for the formal and uh, seeing how that plays out. And now we move on to another high performance, 10 value, star factor, uh, yes. This is the Spyderco, Para 3 lightweight pocket knife manufactured by Spyderco here in Colorado. I love this knife. I've had over a dozen Spyderco pocket knives. This was a gift from a friend, a dear friend, awesome man, Dave Schumann. Dave, this part is for you. Uh, the blade itself is, is hard, keeps an edge. It's wonderful. Um, it's got a nice weird finish kind of a matte finish to the blade itself um, but it's just it's a gorgeous gorgeous utensil I use it every day it's as sharp as a razor right now and I keep it such um, I may do a video on prepping it but just 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 a fun lightweight to we clock in at 2.4 2.45 depending on yeah so it's just it's super, super wonderful. Lightweight, sharp, reliable, form-fitting. What else do you want? It's a 10. It's a star. It's one of the shining lights in my entire collection of tools. Thanks, Dave. I appreciate this more every day. Let's briefly dive into the Aether 70 AG. Um, I'm not going to take off the secondary backpack, but this does have one of the most unique features of any backpack on the market. Now this used to be a uh, standard issue as part of this series. Now it's only for the Plus Pro, Super Pro, whatever the thing they're calling now is the top tier. But this backpack actually comes off, <coughs> click, click, and this unfolds into its own backpack itself, like a day pack, which is awesome. So while well, I'm going to 14ers, I just dislocate this entirely because I don't need the extra space necessarily for weight and I'll just go up with uh, this pack. So this is kind of like an additional space option for longer packs like the one we're about to embark on. So it's got multiple uh, kind of pockets and packets. These pull holders are quick release. They are amazing when you know how to use them. I'll show you how to pull those up. Uh, but yeah, it's got a major, uh, it's got two main cavities here uh, in the center gives you nice access. And then from the bottom, where we keep certain things, heavy things on the bottom. So we'll go through each of these pockets as, as we kind of pack this bag. Um, hydration system uh, drops in fairly easily. I would say that for my setup, um, the three liter is too big for this bag. And it is causing some kind of cramping issues with my hoses. And I'm going to have to replace my hoses soon um, because of that and cold weather, stuff like that. So this actually protrudes a little bit, which is a little bit, uh, well, it's what we have to sacrifice for the design. I think this is more of a two liter back design. And so I'm sneaking an extra three liters sometimes, or an extra liter sometimes in on that. So um, now we're, we're getting into the more kind of niche gear that you don't necessarily have to have, but 
if you don't have it and you need it, you wish you would have brought it with you. And that's this basically a, a rain guard or a rain um, jacket for the backpack itself. This thing is awesome. It's, it's, it's absolutely wonderful. In fact, in heavy rain, this thing goes on in less than 30 seconds once I drop the pack. Uh, it's fantastic. It form fits. It's got a couple clips. It's got a cinch and it's got a clip. But it'll protect everything um, from heavy snow to heavy rain. Fantastic system. Now, on the hike in, however, I'm going to be bringing a new sleep uh, kind of sleep level along. And, and then that's like a fold out switch, uh, switch back like kind of mat that I'll get into when we get into sleep systems. But um, that's going to interfere with this being effective on the trail. So if it does rain, um, that's the only downside with my current configuration would be that I'd have to drop the, the mat to accommodate for heavy rain. But if that's the case, in truth, the mat's waterproof, no big deal. Uh, we'll just keep proceeding forward in heavy rain or find shelter. Nonetheless, this thing is fantastic. Um, 3.7 um, ounces really cute accessory too i mean it just matches the pack and all that stuff and it does form fit it so uh really glad i got this when i did um but yeah it's 10 years of, of collecting this stuff and finally you know you kind of you end up with what you got and i'm pretty stoked on this so highly recommend the rain the rain sleeve or whatever they call it these days uh by osprey ultralight pack rain cover large that's what they call it uh this chum's wallet is just a top-notch little lightweight hyper secure addition with kind of a secret pocket in the bottom and multiple kind of areas to put stuff in i i adore this thing it's lightweight uh weighing in when i load it with driver's license and core stuff at like 1.9 ounces alone it's 6.5 um, i keep this hook on my aether 70 uh, there's a red hook inside the bag itself i'm just going to keep that with the fire beaner and then i'll have those two together uh, in the pack itself but yeah great little great little wallet um my full my full wallet's just too heavy to bring in it's a edc got things that i don't need out in the wilderness so leave that so at home so to speak but yeah hopefully you need yourself a really cheap good solid wallet that won't fall apart ever um, it's got a little tiny like secret compartment. This is your this is your new wallet. Weighing in at uh, 0.8 ounces is the Hero Clip Mini Carabiner. Now this is just truly a 10 product. I wish I would have found one earlier, and it serves one major purpose and a number of other minor purposes. But surprisingly, my Osprey backpack isn't really easy to hang from a bush, from a stand. So what we do is we look at this guy. And it clips on your backpack and it's a fully articulating pivot point, which allows you to uh, hang your backpack anywhere and everywhere on you know fence tree branch and it's just per it's like a permanent fixture on my bag I, I just love it i can't believe i didn't get one earlier i thought it was kind of superfluous but uh from a performance standpoint it does exactly what it's supposed to do it's really heavy duty it's never failed it's just reliable and it's kind of a cool think piece uh i love i love how the design and, and engineering and thought behind it really is very well thought out so um, just a beautiful piece of art also a piece of functional equipment um, and it, you know it rings in it 0.8 ounces I don't know how to really hold it up but that doesn't matter it's cool love it next on the list is the fire beaner from outdoor element it weighs just really shy of an ounce and uh, it's an interesting tool. And I kind of got sold on this thing for the single purpose of 
when I was on uh, Mount Gray trying to make myself tea on Mount Gray, um, my, fa my lighter failed, my torch lighter failed, so I had two lighter failures. I didn't have matches, and my um, flint stick thing just wasn't ergonomic enough to, to have me strike it in such a way to, to have it useful. And then came across this. So basically, it's just what you think, it's a flint. Now it's got a cool option, and I've got the, in the survival bag, you've got the option of, where is it? Yeah, screw driving here where my thumb is and replacing that flint. So I have two replacements that I'll show in my um, survival bag. So those will be handy in case this one fails over time, but I imagine that'll be a couple years from now. The only thing I don't like about this thing, it's rated as a seven. I haven't really tested it in the field per se. Uh, I did test the cord cutter, it worked fine. That's this beak here. Uh, this appears to be a uh, another bottle opener. Everybody's got a bottle opener. It does have a kind of flathead screwdriver thing here, but the downside with this carabiner, and I just it's, it's a flaw that just it's an OCD thing, but it has no locking mechanism. So I keep this with my wallet in the top of my bag, um, but it's beautiful. I mean, there's no doubt about it. The the toning on the on um, the finish is beautiful. I think it's a nice think piece. And it's utilitarian. I tested this out on my trial run I did a couple days ago just to get the fire started. And let me add a video clip of that. But it's so let's give it a shot. Oh, yeah. It certainly works. And uh, yeah, it's beautiful. But certainly not made for any type of climbing. Max 100 pounds, 45 kgs, kilograms. So, yeah, not forgotten, patented. Okay, well, thank you for that. Um, but yeah, we'll give this a shot in the field and see, report back any uh, any uh, any uh, incidents or accidents or uh, experiences. All right, another carabiner of sorts. It's like a carabiner with baby carabiners that I carry on my pack. I actually carry this on my EDC, everyday carry, um, just for the utilitarian factor of these little mini these mini uh, mini carabiners that it has. Now the only downside is it's kind of heavy 1.1, but as you can see, you get a total of six functional carabiners out of it. So I am gonna try to zoom in. Okay, there we go, perfect. And show you this guy. So it's a Nietzsche uh, Bigfoot locker key rack, key chain. And I have a bunch of purposes I use this for, mostly for either hanging stuff up at camp um, with survivor cord um, or guiding the wires um, for my battery system so that uh, I can actually have my back, my solar panel on my backpack working and powering my battery pack, which then will give me more uh, phone use. So these are really, really cool. And like I mentioned before, with the only downside with the, the, the fire beaner, as it's called, is that it doesn't have a locking mechanism. These all have their own individual locking mechanisms if you choose to engage it. Otherwise they work as normal. Oops, off camera. Otherwise they work as normal uh, carabiners. But the locking mechanism is a little bit of a hassle to engage. But there you go, so it locks. So these lock. It's cute. I mean, there's no doubt about it. This also locks, which is nice. So you have these as handy like backup uh, systems. Now, I also have hair ties. Having three girls, I have plenty of hair ties, and those can work as kind of emergency um, ties. And they're quick, and they're simple to understand, and they're cheap. But yeah, this is just one of those things, I think, the only downside is it's heft, but you have six functional carabiners on the fly on the call. So for me, it's 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 worth the expense. I think they're just darling. Um, I think they're a think piece as well. They're definitely worth talking about. The the foot design is just hilarious. Uh, but yeah, it's one of those things. It's like uh, it's utilitarian. Um, it's it's got a good vibe to it, and I just 
loved having it uh, and using it because it brings a smile to my face. And uh, yeah, part of survival is uh, kind of the style of it too. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this one. All right. Weighing in at 0.35 is uh, another Night Itsy S Beaner Sidelock Carabiner number three. Beautiful toning on the aluminum. Uh, it's just really pretty. I'll zoom in. Um, and of course, I just mentioned, you know, one of the primary things that we like is locking mechanisms on our carabiners. Now, I use this on my front of my pack uh, because I like to latch lock one to my pack itself. So boom. So that'll be locked. And then this will be for gloves, typically, or other sort of object that I wish to hold to display light. Maybe it could be, could be a light that I put on there. But uh, anyways, yeah, so that's the kind of mechanism. It's double locking, super light, 0.35. Uh, great little carabiner. No problems with it at all. I think it's just nice color, too. Uh, moving on to uh, water systems. Here we have the Big Zip Evo Platypus 3 liter. Um, <clears throat> it's amazing large capacity of water. Nearly seven pounds uh, at full capacity. Um, I think it's great. I think the only reason I'd rate it at an eight and not higher would be it just, it's actually too big for my pack when fully loaded. And I have some binding um, with some of the hosing and it just doesn't fit um, exactly as the pack would like it to. Um, so, but the upside is, is I've got three liters of water, which realistically is, is a couple days worth um, without hydrating food just to, just to drink and survive. So um, I'm, I'm pretty satisfied that if I load this up with two liters, um, we'll be able to get to water, um, saving myself, you know, an additional pound, couple pounds um, on, on uh, hike and night. So we'll make that decision at the time, but it's a great system. I like it. It's like my third or fourth different version of bladder. Um, they all pretty much function the same. I like the quick release version on this. Um, I haven't had any problems um, with anything breaking apart um, and I clean it regularly. So I might need to replace the hosing just from time. But other than that, it's a great system. Um, that'll be adequate for us to, for me at least have enough uh, aqua to uh to survive if i said aqua i meant agua They're such similar words they have a similar color huh anyways msr guardian purifier this thing is bomb shay bomb is that whatever you want to call it it's awesome it's heavy but this is life so uh, last time I was in the Superstitions a couple years ago, uh, we found a small, small Tamis and I found a small uh, inlet of natural spring water. And we were able to basically take everyone's Nalgene bottles and other types of uh, water holding devices and empty our backpacks and we just charged four miles away. And we used his version of this. Um, I didn't need to use mine. We had redundancy. I'm bringing mine because I'll be up two days before them. Um, so we're going to need this. So I'm excited to put this one in action. Um, it's a solid system. Um, you know, for me, the Nalgene bottles are just fine. They are a little bit hefty. We'll get to weigh in those in a couple seconds. Um, loaded and unloaded with water uh, just to get the, the, the you know, weight difference. But I, I like them. They fit the mouth of this thing perfectly. So for me, it's like you pick a system, you go with it. So I'm satisfied uh, that that uh, this is going to be just fine. So, yeah, I'll be reporting this in the field, hopefully get some cool backdrops of actually using it. So looking forward to that. Mm. I think you're catching on to my uh, color scheme here. It seems I am drawn to these two colors. Nonetheless, I've had these for almost a decade, if not as much. These are just two standard REI Nalgene wide mouth water bottles. Uh, Looking at the weight right now, 84.6. Um, that's quite a bit of weight. I think that's five and a quarter pounds. So 
on the 10 mile hike, five pounds is a lot. So I'm going empty. And, uh, but nonetheless, this is what uh, I'll be using the water filter with. To attach onto the lids here after I sterilize the lids um, and the attachment and the interface. And uh, yeah, so basically a uh, pretty cool process, but these are an eight, they're great. Uh, they're, they're probably a little heavy compared to some modern stuff and stuff that's coming out, but the amount of weight savings is, is minimal. I think these unloaded um, are 6.4 ounces a piece so not a bad price to consider um, they hold quite a bit of fluids um, 32 ounces plus so I don't know great choice can't go wrong with them I'm kind of a must-have for your first time uh, kind of end up with old things like this so pick a bottle you like you might end up with it forever on to something that's completely utilitarian and absolutely fun this splash guard by Guyot. Guyot, I think something like that. Guyot. Um, Guyot Designs. It's just awesome. It fits in your Nalgene bottle. It really does help with like not splashing your face. Kind of have a gurgler here, so to speak. But fun. Every time I see it, it makes me happy. So, I mean, you can't really... Uh, Oops, I gotta tear this out. Let's see, zero. Let's see what the right zero is. Yeah, 0.35. We're looking at a, a kind of utilitarian, fun little piece that uh, kind of wraps up the wraps up the water, with the exception of the tablets, which I'll also include here. So one thing, and it goes without speaking, but four days in the desert, uh, drinking filtered water and, and being in the sun is going to take a toll, and it certainly will sap you of electrolytes. Uh, not, you know, I've got a couple backups in my, in the, the survival bag, survival kit, um, or the med kit for, to be specific, however, these are great. Um, I split between, I, now I'm, I'm packing in vitamins, but I had extra ones and so I kind of overflowed. I had some electrolytes from a different pack. So I got some watermelons, fresh lime for electrolytes. Then I got this blackberry citrus vitamins. I'll probably, you know, you know, enjoy this grape G2 uh, electrolyte here and then also just trade or, you know, if somebody else has some cramps or something like that, I can give them one of these as a backup so I think I got a full sleeve of each so plenty plenty a couple a day um, if needed but otherwise just a really good resource to have uh, I don't think the brands are much different I mean to be truthful um, there 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 is some stuff uh, out of a whole not a certain type of vitamin store that it was designed by the Gatorade guy um, so I may go to that next and try that out I have that the daily but it's a spoonful and I don't want to bring the entire canister so but these are great. They dissolve. They're perfect for 16 ounces, uh, just like our our now game bottles are. So, yeah, if you need something smart, these are good. Weighing in at uh, four nine point four point nine ounces, um, it's a definitely necessary part of the process or part of the journey. Ooh, moving away from uh, the sleep system and chair. Now we're getting into the cooking and food systems. This is where I'm in a dangerous place as far as weight. I'm already pushing, I'm at like almost 10 pounds with my entire kit walking in. I know I'm bringing a lot of food, but I also know that I'm going to be eating a lot of calories. So it'll be, it'll be interesting to see where I come out with everything, but I have a feeling I'm pretty, I'm going to be within 10% uh, expected uh, consumption rate. So anyways, this, this is a great, honestly, this, this system is wonderful. This is the jet boil. I adore it. I don't like the other fuel systems. You buy these anywhere, so I won't be flying with this, of course. Um, my my first adventure I'm going with for the first two days is going to buy two of these units, the one for each of us. We'll go through one and see how far, and then use the other one as backup. So I guess we get 25 boils or so out of that. So did the math. We're probably going to go over. Um, but anyways, the, the, the system itself is pretty clever. It's It's, it's kind of a... I won't demonstrate it here, I'll do it in field, but it's it's kind of a transformer of sense where it's got some legs 
stabilizing legs for um, stabilizing legs for the actual uh, stove itself, and then the main housing uh, is, is take away and put on so you can boil water and do other things. But uh, pretty slick system, very fast, um, really wonderful uh, addition to the toolkit. All right, this is where it gets super exciting. Get off your seats, folks. This is this is where the action is. This is my Snow Peak titanium stacking mug double walled wear combo set. It weighs eight eight point three ounces. It's uh it's it's awesome. It's everything you need out there as far as vessels. Um, I got the Nalgeen bottles of course, but these are great. Little nesting like the little Russian nesting dolls. These things are just fantastic. Uh, I did a price check on them just to see what they're going for nowadays and they're just insane. I got them for a lot better price, but uh, that was a long time ago. But nonetheless, beautiful little nesting uh, mess kit. Uh, this along with the, the long spoons, everything couldn't be happier. So definitely one of the crown jewels earns what we're calling the, the star factor um, in my kit. So yeah, Snow Peak Titanium pretty awesome stuff. All right, rounding out my mess kit is the Cedar Summit. Extended spoons, I'm gonna call them the Alpha Light Spork and the Alpha Light Spoon. These are awesome because I'm gonna be doing a lot of uh, dehydrated bags. And uh, these are awesome in that sense that you don't get your knuckles dirty uh, scraping for food. So they kind of pair well. They are a little awkward with other things, but I use the the nesting cups is more of sipping bowls and drinking uh, apparatus or hot soup like miso or something. But uh, yeah, these are really great. Light, 0.9, so clocking in at 0.45 a piece uh, as far as ounces, which is great. So for less than an ounce, utensils. This is when we get into sleep systems. So this is the Nemo Riff. I'm rating it an 8. Uh, you know, it's just, I think it's the material. I just wish there was... The, the sleeping bag material on the inside, I just don't like how it rubs against me. So it's otherwise great. It's got some features that allow it to expand. Um, I'm a side sleeper and I like to basically do fetal position sometimes. And so, I, you know, that, that type of uh, pad or, or that type of uh, sleeping bag accommodates for it. So for design, it's really great. Uh, it's, it's, it's heavy. I mean, they're all going to be heavy, 35.9. So... We're pushing two and a half pounds, um, roughly. Actually, just shy to a quarter, whatever. But uh, yeah, we're over two pounds, and it's a good bag. Uh, it definitely collapses into a nice format. Uh, the temperature we're going to, this will be overkill, probably just what I need. Um, but nothing else. It's a good bag. Uh, can't complain. Okay, well, this is actually not rated at all yet. This is new. So my wife and I have worked out a uh, design that's going to incorporate my current REI co-op flash insulated air pad with this switchback. And it's kind of a stretch. I kept the box. I'm going to keep, keep good care of it. But this will be a tester trip. Uh, ultimately, what I'd like is an alternative to the queen size mattress and the forerunner so when i go up to 14ers i can sleep the night before and then get up the mountain and be down the mountain um, and either at work before 10 or 9 and on a friday so i need a sleep system that isn't so big like that like the big and honestly the insulation on the queen size bed isn't the best it's thin and then you have to Anyways, it's a hassle. So I was thinking this would be a nice alternative, just a nice compact sleep system. So this gives us an R value of two. Um, and it's got this reflective material that's reminiscent of like the solar blankets. So I think the combination of this with the with uh, the REI flash system and then encased in, a, in sort of like a sleeve or a pillow sleeve, so to speak, is a uh, two different material blanket. One, the bottom layer is going to be made of wool. Second, uh, ex uh, the top layer is going to be of a quilted poly, um, poly flannel, 
And so I'll have basically a, a sleeve for both of my sleep units to keep them together at night. And also give me a little grip with that fleece so that my sleeping bag doesn't uh, slide all over the place. Now there's, there's cures for that, but those of you who know know what I'm talking about. So anyways, let's give this sucker a try, this Nemo switchback. It weighs in at 14, but it's light. I mean, it feels light. It's, I put it on the outside of the, the pack, and I'll, when we pack the bag, I'll show you the orientation. It doesn't bother me, and we're going to be in open space, so it's not like... I'm worried about running into stuff. So anyways, we'll give this a shot in the field. All right, this is actually two different products and I'll, I'll break them out from one another. Uh, the first product is actually the REI uh, Co-op Flash Insulated Sleeping Air Pad in Red Hot. It's a regular wide edition, has an R value claimed of 3.7. Um, that's inside this bag and it, it's, a, it's a good sleeping pad. I'm, I'll keep it. I'll keep it uh, inflated. I'll repair it. It's nothing wrong with it. That's what I got. I'm happy with it. Uh, I do think that in Colorado, cold, I need a little more. I don't think this trip I'll need what my wife's making, but we're gonna do it anyways. Now I'll get to this bag in a second, which is actually a what I would call a like an all-star product. But here, the REA Flash unit itself, 19 point. Um, 19.95, put that in the computer, so we're over a pound for that, but it's worth it. Sleeping is like one of the most important things you can do for yourself. All right. So that locks us in on that, but here's the real star. This is where this goes from an eight to a 10 star product. And I don't know if you can see this, but there's a diagram of a guy basically blowing into the bag and then rolling the bag. And that's all this simple tech does. It's got a built-in airflow that plugs right into my mattress. And then all you do is blow into this thing. I'll, I'll show you in the field. You blow into this thing, roll it up, and it takes five five times of rolls, and then my, my whole mattress is, is blown up. This thing is amazing. It's one of the seven things that I have that I would consider to be like a all-star product. Have to have. So nice, especially when you're out of breath. You just did 10 miles. You hit camp. Last thing you want to do is breathe into a bag. So... This Cetus Summit bag, it's just, it's amazing. Cetus Summit Airstream Pump Dry Sack. And it also has a dry sack, so it's like three purposes. Blow up your mattress and protect stuff from getting wet. So, weighing in at 2.8 ounces is the Aeros Pillow Ultra Light Large. Really lovely, super light pillow. Fits wonderfully in the Nemo Riff 30 sleeping bag, mummy style. Uh, this will also get a pillow treatment by my wife to round out the system. My whole sleep system is currently at about 5.5 pounds, including this. That includes the chair, so sleep and chair system around 5.5 pounds. I imagine that I'm only gonna be adding at least a pound, a pound, maybe two, with my sleeve. Now, again, I think that's one of those things that it would be overkill, and it certainly is. For the situation however i think that testing out the new equipment and just kind of getting excited about my wife's um my wife's ability to sew this thing has, has got me excited about it so it'll be one of those sacrificial pieces so to speak just to get a smile and, and actually enjoy enjoy the night and enjoy the sleep time that i do get there so anyways arrow's pillow gonna give it a shot no rating yet weighing in at uh, 18.2 ounces is the helinox Chair Zero. I'm pretty sure that they're selling this design to um, REI in their ultralights now, which is totally cool. I got this a number of years ago. I can't complain about it. The only orientation is like this side to side orientation. I almost prefer the A-frame version on these chairs. It's, it's a total matter of preference, but it's a fully functional super light chair. I can't complain. I like the color too. Uh, on top of it all but yeah it's light it's good it's a nine 
Um, I can't imagine what a 10 chair would look like, but I think it would probably just feel a little bit better. Uh, but like I said, I've tried, well, I haven't said, I've, I've had a number of chairs over the years, different way, different types. And they, they all pretty much function the same. And really this is where you can save on weight uh, quite a bit. So having a nice light chair is, 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 is really cool. After uh, re repairing the scale, we're, we're looking at uh, 17, right, 16.8 um, ounces for my trekking poles. So I'm at a pound. These are surprisingly affordable. Got them at Costco. They haven't let me down. There are there are definitely more expensive options out there that are a bit lighter. This could be a place where I could save. I wouldn't call these a nine. Um, in truth, on my scale, I have over there. These are a seven, and I'd say due to their weight, they're a little dirty too. I gained a 0.15 ounces with that dirt on on the tips there. So my practice run for for this trip coming up, my first major practice run was 6.7 miles with uh, about 34 pounds on. Um, my next one on Wednesday is going to be full gear. So all 45 pounds or 43 pounds, whatever this comes out to in the end, will be uh, will be tested, two liters of water, etc. But uh, as far as poles go, these are great. I I like the poles. I like the the Aether 70 has the most clever, easy to access pole management system. I can get to my poles from my backpack without having to take my pack off. Um, it takes a little bit of practice, but you can do it with one hand. I love that quick release mechanism that that, that provides. Uh, so the, the poles for me are almost a necessary evil. I've got a I've got a, an unusual hip, so I've got to you know spread the spread the burden so to speak, which isn't bad because you can really get a good arm workout if you know how to use the poles in more of an aerobic way. So uh, yeah, poles. Sure, I, I would love to try out some fancier ones, but and, and don't really need them. So unless somebody gets them to me or uh, I get you know some sort of option to review, I am going to stick with these. All right, so kind of a gimmicky product, but nonetheless something that I enjoy. You got to have a good headlamp. Um, a headlamp is essential. But I like this little carrying case because. Um, it doubles down it's kind of a night light so you can use your headlamp with this kind of diffuser to give yourself a little kind of diffused light so kind of a cute little thing it also has this attachment which allows you to basically hang this from from anywhere so you can have a little bit of downward light as a top light in the tent or something like that. Waterproof, not that it necessarily needs to be truly, but yeah, it's got a little water, almost waterproof. I think water would get in there, but kind of just fits handy dandy. This is kind of an older, older unit, but uh, works just fine. Uh, this Petzl headlamp is nothing, anything special. Actic, it's not a fancy one it takes three triples which is nice because I have six as my backup um, one two three super bright and off you hold and press and get red hold and press get white back medium all right so just a nice little headlamp I wouldn't say it's anything wonderful eight I think is good I think it would probably be a seven if not for this kind of funny secondary um, secondary feature, which is kind of fun. It's just a little diffuser of sorts. A handy little hanging thing. So, yeah, it's a fun little headlamp. Um, just part of the power and lighting systems. Uh, get on to the next. All right, the contents of my orange three liter Osby dry sack is my medical kit, my repair kit, and my kind of survival stuff. And so we're gonna break this open. This is where our number of products rapidly multiplies. So 
That's the base I've got a survival kit. I've got I've already weighed these. I've got some loose items which represent sort of their own unique things and that's the survivor cord and six hair ties. These hair ties can be used as uh, anchors, number of hanging things, uh, just really utilitarian. And of course the survivor cord which inside the med kit has the instructions for all the different threading in there. Um, this doubles up as I used to carry an extra uh, shoestring, but I uh, realized that this is redundant. Uh, knee brace, I had issues with my knee. The light version, I've got a heavy knee brace coming. It'll be included in this section. But then of course we've got the big kit, the medical kit, and uh, that's really really the fun there's like 24 different products in here and uh each one of them serves a d distinct purpose of course but most of this is like trying to optimize what you have so i carry two of these emergency blankets and the reason being is they're good to have and they're if somebody needs one then this gives them that extra layer of protection especially in a cold out Inside here, I've got some handy things just to kind of a go-to quick, cheap, not cheap, I'd say quick, easy guide for certain basic, basic uh, emergency stuff. Good to have in case of emergency, people are freaked out, nice reference. Also, I've got that uh, survivor cord breakdown, so I keep that handy as well. Um, one of the coolest things out there is this moleskin. Uh, this is a backpacker's best friend, especially if you have any issues with your feet. You can cut this. Um, in fact, I practice on the corners. Um, you can cut this really simply and do a design. So if you have a blister or something, give yourself a layer of protection around that. Um, really good stuff. High quality. Um, yeah, moleskin. These scissors are a new addition. I took out my uh, EDC shears. These are much more dangerous in case of a situation. These can actually hurt somebody. Cut, so I wouldn't use them to cut their clothing away, but for precise little tiny cuts for bandages and stuff like that, these are really good if you have a calm hand. Super sharp, ultra light. I mean, these things don't weigh. Let's see. Let's see if it even registers. 0.2 ounces. Cute. Um, extra salts. Uh, you know, silicon repair kit, Synthalon patches, tenacious tape it's called. Um, this will help with, you know, certain uh, things breaking, certain clothing, anything with silicon. Uh, this will help treat or repair any tours, tears, rips, stuff like that. All right, into the medicine side, Neosporin, always good. Gloves, gauze. Necessary super glue, different sizes. These could save your life, <coughs> literally. A little extra gauze. Some more kind of custom made Dr. Scholl's knockoffs. Gauze. Q tips. So that's that pouch. Surprisingly, a lot of room in here. Stop bleeding kits here. Um, it's just a big pad. And then uh, medications, cuts, scrapes. So in here, I'm not going to pull it all out. anti real afterbite. Um, it's after sting relief um, medications. Ibuprofen, alcohol tolerance, um, other things like that. I could probably use some more ibuprofen. Um, but yeah, pretty pretty awesome. And then deep inside here is another guide to wilderness medicine, kind of a deeper kit. Um, so if you want to get deeper on something, you've got that built in. So really kind of a cool little uh, med kit rolls up, a little over a pound but uh, highly effective in uh, all sorts of things with the exception of <clears throat> a tourniquet, really. Now, 
this. Ooh, and these are all. These are all mines. I'm happy with how these have been built out over the years. So this contains a number of products as well. Packed in tight with a nice little cute, cute, cute dry sack. I'm a sucker for a dry sack. But uh, let's get all these little guys out of here. So we get the sack. Of course, standard lighter. I'm missing matches, so that's one thing on my list. I'm gonna get some ever strike type things. This is a signal uh, in case you get lost or something, or if you see other people, you can just point this your eye through it and kind of shimmer that and get the reflection to go towards them. Kit, fishing kit, kind of never tried it for fishing. A little overkill, but it's got three uh, clothespins in there that are nice. Little fire starters, um, and then some replacement ferrule rods for the igniting, the carabiner, the fire beaner. Um, duct tape, little plastic cylinder in there. That's how we got it in there, anyways. Yeah, there we go. Um, batteries, backups, right? Headlamp. Um, I keep these two 30s in there just because people use that a lot. Backup for the people, compass, baby compass, and two repair kits for different types of uh, equipment, different types of fabric. So yeah, we got a lot of repair stuff in here, but totally in, in this section we got what, repair kits, one product, whistle, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven products with the, with the dry side. So kind of nifty, see how many things you rely on when you're out in the wilderness, um, things you hope you don't need, but most of them you might end up needing. Oh, next on the list is uh, sunglasses case. Yeah, it's not a nine, whatever. It's just a seven, but whatever. These plastic it helps from getting collapsed in transit on the airport, whatever. They're light enough, but uh, got my sunglasses inside there. So 2.35, um, not bad, whatever. Um, again, we need sunglasses with polarization, pre preferably, um, and just something nice to get the uv out of our out of our uh, eyes over the trip so anyways for weight's sake 2.35 all right kind of dipping into the hunting category uh i found this kuyu kuyu belt i can't pronounce it kuyu belt uh, nonetheless this thing i've had for six years of daily use obviously it's frayed and torn but that nylon's not going anywhere I used this to pack a motorcycle as an emergency strap uh, when I was near a volcano in Nicaragua. It was pretty cool. Uh, so I use it as kind of an excess utility. Uh, the only downside and the reason why it's not a 10 um, for a belt, uh, weight's great, love it. It's, it's strong as heck, never cin never uncinches. Uh, the only downside um, is just I can't, I can't actually hike with it on because this size of this belt interferes with the strap, the hip straps that come across my navel. And so what I'll do is I'll put this in the pack itself. So when I get to camp, I'll have extra support for my pants. Um, but on the hike in, I don't necessarily need it because as the backpack cinches around my waist, everything becomes kind of one unit. And so as long as my pants, uh, I'm not using those ones that split, um, the, the black ones that split on me, and I'll get to those uh, where the, I had a cinch split uh, so I'm only going in with one really good pair of pants, and I'm going in with a secondary pair from a couple seasons ago, which are great pants. They're just not the best. They do convert, uh, but we'll get those to the pants uh, section. But anyways, this belt's great. Great company, too. Most of my hunting gear is from this company. Um, they got great patterns. Um, really just a fan. Uh, really high tech. Uh, all the stuff that I've gotten from them has been really uh, the highest quality, and none of it's broken um, at all. So... Yeah, hats off to them for making a great belt too. Okay, we're getting into the cutesy side of town. Um, this this is one of those items that uh, certainly is 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 not necessary um, and is absolutely under the discretion of the person uh, going on the backpacking or trip itself. It's a simple clothesline. Uh, this thing comes out. You've got quite a long stretch of uh, rope, so to speak, 
and it's got these individual beads that you can cinch six items along the way. So basically what this is, a lot of my items are in dry sacks or are in some sort of organizational system that I then uh, kind of can quickly uh, put into and exit the bag so that I can get to what I'm looking for. And so with that kind of a system where you don't have a lot of loose items, um, when you get to camp, it's nice to, and when you make camp, it's nice to kind of stretch everything out. You're not always squatting and looking on the ground for things. You can actually elevate them off the ground. It's nice for food. It's nice for access uh, and stuff like that uh, for the entire you know trip. You basically make your surrounding area kind of your living space and you accommodate. So things like this, uh, this little tiny uh, Sea to Summit light line clothesline is a lightweight measure, 0.95 ounces, uh, and it actually kind of gives you more space, so to speak. So very fun. Can't wait to show you guys that in the field. All right, of all the necessary evils in the world, this is one of them, Wilderness Wipes, Sea to Summit. Uh, I haven't used this particular brand, but whatever. Uh, they all function pretty much the same, so uh, not really uh, big on whatever. This is probably what they do its job. Let's let's give it that. So adjust the camera. There we go. So yeah, see the summit wilderness wraps. Uh, I put them underneath my now game bottle on my right hip. Uh, it kind of balances out a load, and then I balance it out with the batteries in a different way. All right, here we are at uh, 32 ounces my green three liter dry sack from Osprey I uh, this is gonna be one of the more controversial pieces of equipment it's an older zero goal zero nomad which is a fully functional solar panel as well as this Venture 30 backup battery. <clears throat> and of course, cords. It's all said and done. I'm reading this as a seven. Um, it's it's heavy. It doesn't really provide all of that much fantastic power. However, it does work. And I'm gonna need power on this uh, trip because what's coming next is uh, gonna be using up a lot of battery power for these videos. So gonna need this and another solution in tandem. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Still in the power and lighting systems category, we got two lighting options that are pretty cool, both solar panel, uh, both from M Powered. This is an older unit, an older R2 unit that I will demonstrate here that's pretty quick and easy, but it's a solar panel, solar powered, I should say. It's a solar panel that solar powers the light system and it's a blow up I shall demonstrate real quick now this is an older this is one of their first first ones but as you can see you can blow it up but the cool thing is it's got three settings that allow us to have an ambient light. Plug, camera plug. Yeah, so it's kind of cool. It has a little hanger um, on both ends so that uh, you can hang it from the ceiling this way, solar panel up if you want it in your tent at night. Uh, or you can hang it from the side as well if you want the light to shine up. Um, either way, really fun little unit you just throw it out in the sun during the day and then it is enough light for 
beyond. Now, this unit's kind of got a clear plastic. The new ones have more of a frosted, and it gives a better diffusion pattern. But in truth, this is just a fun little light. Uh, it does kind of weigh in a little bit heavy. Let's see where we're at. 4.4 ounces. So it's reasonable. Um, it's nice to have. It doesn't require batteries. Uh, it's reliable charge before you go you've got at least two days on it reasonably with you know limited usage at night so i love this thing it, it could be lighter it could have a better frosted covering um like their newer versions however i'll, I'll use it until it's done yeah i realize that the lights were off but that's fine um i think it's good to demonstrate the colors and the, and the other lights but uh yeah anyways another little tiny funny thing about this unit is that they kept the same form factor as the older units. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have my wife, if we have any extra material with the project, my uh, sleeping system project, uh, if we have some extra material, I'm going to make a little sleeve with a pole string around it to protect the face of this, but I also be able to place that on top in case both together. Um, that way I can kind of keep these two things which are similar together uh, in the same pack, same place, um, make things easier to organize. The last piece of equipment that's been filming this without any visible vibration like that has been the gimbal. It's coming in at 17.85 ounces, so just over a pound. This allows me to keep the camera like stabilized uh, as well as it hooks uh, neatly up with the recording system and the microphones. I'm currently not using microphones as I didn't have them when I finished this series out by using the same technique, but uh, moving forward, mics only. Last on the electronics list is the DJI dual mic set with receiver and chargeable rechargeable battery case. This will require some battery as well over there so hence we need the solar panel and the, the backup Lucy solar light so we'll see those in action. Inside the Kifru uh, little little bag here is just my eye my glass uh, stuff uh, and a pair of headphones wired headphones so I'm bringing you the wireless ones but I'll also just probably pack so 3.45 for that um, and then I'll be packing my handkerchief in there as well. But uh, 3.45 puts us at um, the weight for this item. Can't go camping, can't go backpacking, can't go very many places without having a need for a bandana of some sorts. Now, I do have that neck gaiter, which does some pretty magic things. But, you know, just having a little uh, extra bandana around uh, is nice to have for sure. 1.35 ounces it's not too big of a sacrifice either however these things do add up this is going to act as a pre-filter uh, in case of you know a dirty pond uh, or some other way where we're not don't have direct access to like liquid water and so we may have to pre-filter um, and do some stuff with our nalgene bottles but nonetheless this is just fun pattern it was on sale at REI so I got it cheap um, but yeah, I like mushrooms. Oh, yeah, so cute. Little frogs. Little frog guys. Hey, froggies. What up, dude? I'm ready to go camping. Me too. Here's where we get to some kind of dif difficult choices being an artist and wanting to also kind of make this as an integral part of the creative process while I'm up there. Now, in the past, I have taken on trips my polychromos faber castell pencils and these things are just amazing they're they're a fantastic coloring pencil got really good tone deep just gorgeous but as you can see 13 ounces we're almost at a pound and i'm like pushing 40s mid 40s right now and in truth you know i don't think i'm going to be worried so much about the colors and stuff while i'm there my goal on this trip is to come up with like six designs for my wife's cross-stitch kind of uh, obsession. So I want to 
come up with some simple designs of the flora and fauna of the superstitions during this time. But I think I'm going to be able to accomplish it with this art kit. And I'll kind of, this is in a Kifaru uh, bag. And this is one of those products that has multi products within it. And so this art kit is going to be multi layered. And so uh, it'll add to our, our body count, so to speak, for how many different products that I'm actually taking with this. So inside the Kifaru bag itself, we've got this kind of really cool Quattro grid, which I've done some mandalas with. Um, just some fun stuff. It's my favorite. The fish. So I'm looking forward to doing some similar mandalas, possibly. So that'll go. So that's, that's kind of a cool little item. Um, another is just kind of flowers. Um, I, I pulled this on Bierstadt. So this is where the colored pencils were nice to have up there. I was able to punch that out, but um, I think it's okay. I can do outlines and I can do photographs and I can bring the pencils, just not have them um, on the actual trip. And I can take the next couple days after the trip to maybe come up with those designs and uh, have something to, to give my wife and then share with other people because we're like doing the, the look and feel. I'm really looking to, for the, to find the, like six or seven colors that uh, are of that trip, but I can capture those with the camera. Um, other things inside the art bag, of course, now these, this is one product, so to speak, but two instances, 0 0.9, 0 0.5. These are the best pencils in the world. Um, graphic gear. Come on, grab me, buddy. Graphic gear Pentel 1000s. So they're a little bit heavy, but I like the heft. I have all the different lead sizes from 3, 4, 0 0.5, 0 0.7 to 9. I'm only taking two. I'm bringing back up lead just in case in the B flavor. I like it a little softer. I'm pretty hard to touch with, with that. Um, gonna be bringing, so those are kind of like pencils. One product, erasers, second product, just kind of nonchalant erasers. Uh, two of my favorite cheap pens. Uh, I recommend these pens to anybody. They're kind of cheap. Those the 207 um, Uniball um, Pro. I like the feel of that, the Sigma. Um, so that's a nice pen. And then I, this has been my go-to for over a decade, just as a go-to. I don't know. It's not the best in the world, but I, I just... The Vision Elite has just always been a consistently good pen, so I like the way it inks, feels good. Um, and then inside I also have, because of the geometry of the mandalas, I just got kind of you know, some, some tools, triangles, compasses. So lightweight. But that's it. That's my art kit. Um, that's what I'll be bringing this, this trip. So a couple pens. Um, should mention that I'm also, of course, Going to be bringing my my notebook in whatever variation it finds itself in. By the time I get there, I may have another one started. So, but anyways, yeah, always have a journal as well for the experience. Uh, obligatory on my list and probably overkill for sure for you know amount of content is is my journal. However, um, this is my primary primary tool for recording everything and kind of getting ideas down. So it's definitely going with us. 17.35s, uh, yeah, it's heavy and I'll pay for it, but uh, one of those things that uh, it's kind of like can't go without. If you see this video and I went missing, pretty safe to say I'm somewhere within a mile of this place in February 15th to February 20th. But uh, I always like to do these cardboard signs when I hit elevation. Makes makes the trip kind of feel like a, a road trip of sorts. A road trip on your feet. A feet trip. Feet, for, feet road trip. Something like that. No, your eyes aren't deceiving you. That's the real deal. This is essential camping gear. Essential backpacking gear. What you don't realize yet is that this is the most ideal trash can in the world. 
Now, I can't attest to the delectability or the, the gourmet natures of scorching sour cream and onion flavored potato based objects like within this can. I can attest that the sour cream and onion is delicious and and honestly there's a saying the best sauce in the world is hunger. So hunger is the best sauce. And I tell you what, these scorching sour cream and onion chips when you're low on electrolytes are the bomb, whatever flavor. I mean, you can eat the ones that even sound disgusting, but when you're dehydrated, tired, and you need some salt, bingo, chakalaka. Now, like I said, the cool thing about this is this ends up being a trash can. And so all the other things that uh, you kind of consume along the way, this is a convenient way to keep that all sorted and non-sticky and et cetera, et cetera. It even comes with its own built-in top. It's genius. Mr. Pringle, whoever he was, is probably one of the smartest people in the world. The fact that he can grow potato chips that are perfectly that sized is just fantastic. I wish I knew how he did it. Ooh, bag number two in the food systems category. What we got in the box. Well, I just love these Osprey dry socks. They make everything so easy and nice to take in and out of your bag. So I'll take this a little bit off. So I've got a plethora of teas. I do. We have a number of teas. Now I've got some morning and some sleepy. So I've got, and I do believe these work. So I got five, so I'm going to give one away. Sleepy time and then for morning, I'm going to try this CBD Machka from Buddha Brand. Get three of those, so I'll give one away. And I also have my go-to Earl Grey. Now, because I am bringing Earl Grey, I am trying out these coconut cloud creamers for a non-dairy um, substitute for cream because I like basically I have London Fogs is my go-to drink. Give me a London Fog, please. Just missing a little bit of honey, which I might solve. So yeah, so we've got some drinkable teas, creamers, one a day, keto, sugar things. These things are fun. Um, they're just nice little peanut butter sugar jolters. Um, and then I splurged. These for one a day. These are just wonderful cannabinoid chocolates that help with muscle soreness that are wonderful. So that'll be my, my chocolate treat um, with cannabinoids for hiking and all that muscle soreness. So that's in that bag. And then <coughs> I'm a sucker for a dark chocolate with orange zest. So I'm treating myself to a Beyond Good chocolate bar from... Sprouts, I thought it would be kind of a cool addition. And then I got a secret passion. I hate this, but I like these so much. They're just full of sugar. But uh, these pure organics, um, whatever. They're fruit roll-ups, man. They're just basically fruit roll-ups for adults. And they're great. Um, but they're high sugar content. And so they'll bring your, bring your sugars in alignment pretty quick. So that's my another sugar jolter. But then I just have some kind of different brands of smoothie. You've got a chia. And then from Costco, I enjoy these. Uh, got a lot of the fibers in them still, which is good. Whoa, look at that. Oh, wow, that thing reacts. That's the first time I've struck my gimbal. So that's it. I have, you know, basically a smoothie a day. I've um, got three of those. And then uh, chia squeeze. I think the only thing I'm really missing is honey um, from from the looks of things here, but uh, I'll put that on my list. Something to bring if I can find some sort of kind of makeshift honey, single use that makes sense. But uh, yeah, that's a bag number two. Dry bag number two. And this is 18.8 ounces. What's in the bag? I'll show you what's in the bag. What have we got in bag number two? I love these dry sacks. They, they make everything really easy to get in and out. So I got salad to go. That's fantastic. Nice and salty. 
I'm trying out the Brad's Crunchy Kale. So this is more of my salads. I got a breakfast in here. I love these sprouted lentils. I eat them raw. They're just great snack. High in fiber, all that fun stuff. Um, I got one breakfast here. An oatmeal, beets. I'm a big kind of chocolate and beet guy. And then I got these two things on sale. So I have some protein backup for kind of trail walk and stuff like that. So that's bag number one. Well, folks, I discovered where a lot of the weight is. It's 45.8 ounces. Massive amount of weight. But it is dehydrated. It is my main meal. So looking into this first night, it's going to be awesome. Splitting that, that's a two-piece. One for my... One for my hiking partner, one for myself. We're gonna do that with this three mac and cheese. So I think those two together first night will be an awesome addition. Happy about that. Um, some breakfast option. I got uh, it's banana oatmeal. I also have that oatmeal that I had in the dry sack. For other dinners, however, we've got Mountain House chicken and mashed potatoes. I'll write up on that. And then, trying a new brand out. This guy specifically pointed this out as being awesome. Good to go. Smoked three bean chili. And for the fourth night, super high calorie, super high protein. Mountain House Pro Pack Beef Stroganoff, which is amazing. Now, I did bring, I think I'm guilty of my sweet tooth getting the best of me. One of the desserts I'm bringing is Triple Berry Crisp Dessert. Triple Berry Crisp Dessert. Triple Berry Crisp Dessert. Dessert too. So, I'll be sharing that with someone. All right, another pound and a half. This is my fourth food sack of the trip and uh, as you can imagine it's uh, pretty heavy pound and a half let's see what's in this guy let's see what I got myself oh yeah more sweets gluten free blueberry peach crisps ooh yum yum look at this what the heck mango sticky rice get out of town what does that even mean? I'm going to find out. Oh, yeah. Now, I do have a warm breakfast. Biscuits and gravy. I just, man, biscuits and gravy. God, not like that. So this will be a love. And then the coup de gras. Oh, two coup de gras. Fat. This is in the walkout aisle of REI, of course, right? This is how they get you. But this thing is, yeah. No nitrates, which is good. So we're gonna give this Sweetwood Smoke Company barbecue. And give that stuff a try. 11 grams of protein, yum yum. All right, but the coup de gras, look at this. What the, what, what happened? What happened? This is it. Just add water. A, de a decadently rich cream, creamy chocolate pudding with cookie crumb crust and toppy peanuts. All right, that's my last night. Right there. Weighing in at 2.95 is uh, the Outdoor Research Sahara Cap. Now, this thing is not gonna get you a girlfriend if you're single. It's ugly but functional. And the sun protection on the neck area on this thing is, is unparalleled in the hat world, really. I think it's a fantastic hat. I think it's, I think it's just ugly. I don't think that you can escape that. I mean, that's just weird. It is, this looks weird. And it is. But when you put it on, and this cinches around your neck, so this whole protection area, Gives you awesome sun protection. 
Let's see. So this is removable. It's got a fairly complex way of uh, attaching itself. You have to do this Velcro and you have to do it right. But when it does work, it's, a, it's, a, it's an integral part of the entire hat. So you can remove this and just have a cap, which is cool. Um, but I really like the the kind of trans, the, the kind of the full neck and and uh, head area being protected, double down, right? Um, any types of layers because that sun's nasty out there. Um, but yeah, this is a great hat. It's like it's like I said, it's just it's just got awful ugly. Nothing you can do about it. Um, you look like when you wear it, you, you look you look like a dork and you look like you should be hiking the mountains. Um, so it fits in perfectly um, with the with what we're doing. So um, can't knock it, gotta have it. Um, this is one of my favorite hats, it's just ugly. So there's, I calculate, to, uh, you know, I keep this spreadsheet on everything that I take out on each trip um, and keep all the detailed kind of data uh, close at hand evaluating things and now I'm sharing that kind of info with you this is just the cataloging moment right so we're, we're going through we're kind of identifying weight we're identifying kind of value at a high level and then I'm going to be doing individual individual shots individual movies for each product but here's the funny thing um, philosophically there's these things called types and tokens so what I mean by that Right now I have over 168 types of product. Now there's a lot more tokens. Um, so what that means is I'm counting a product as band-aids or one product. So there's a lot of tokens under band-aids. I got smaller, larger, etc. So when I say 168 products, I'm saying that currently we got over 168 unique products with a lot more tokens than that. So there's one product category for, um, oops, gimbal fell there's one product category for uh oops lost my train of thought nonetheless um back on track this is one of those awesome fun products i won this in the company pool and i had argentina out of the gate so that threw it over the top after i had already beaten the whole company and uh guessing the correct score so to speak but yeah this is first place i got uh I got an Argentina jersey, which is super cool. I got to choose it. Um, the, what I love about it, I mean, it's it's super meaningful, and I had a lot of pleasure getting to know the people over in the Netherlands. Um, and they, of course, picked the Netherlands out of the gate. Um, so most of the company was already already doomed, so to speak, with my, my initial pick. But I, I just knew it had to be Messi's year, and I was so proud to watch that. It was fun. Uh, it was, I didn't drink the whole cup, which was awesome. First time, I just didn't feel like it. Uh, I, I, I enjoyed it. It was great. It was the best cup ever. And I, I'm just glad I was completely there. And So anyways, this, this shirt, though, it has significance more than that. It's the material. It's ultra lightweight. It's a wicking. It, it, it's by design. It's made for people sweating. Dudes running marathons in 90 minutes, right? Uh crazy people and so this is it's great it's, it's it's bacterial resistant all the great properties you want for high energy high high octane physical you know interaction with the environment so this is just a great it's a great shirt it's it's light to i think where we were at i've already measured it it's 5.4 um so yeah, as far as like, so, you know, I'm going up there with the ex officio at nighttime and uh, I'll have all the backup layers for any cold instances. However, this is probably my, my during the day shirt. Um, I am bringing another shirt, which is uh, perhaps overkill, but it's okay. It's just like the pants. I think an extra pair of pants is overkill. Um, however, uh, I did have a pant you know, wardrobe malfunction, so to speak, with that set of piranhas, which I'll show you guys. It's a broken, I don't need to show you the damage. I'm not shaming anybody. Uh, I, I used them a lot, and the buckle on the cinch, 
for the it snapped and so uh, I need to have those sent in but this back to the Argentina shirt lightweight it's just beautiful and I'm just so proud that this was the year to watch it uh, but yeah one of those kind of tens for a number of reasons uh, honestly I'm gonna do this because why the heck not I already know it's gonna be like my one of my all-time favorite shirts it already is it's one of those things so my backup shirt is a short sleeve the North Face road trip shirt Sequoia red plaid I've had it for seven years it's a daily driver like I love this shirt it's tough it's never ripped buttons are never gotten loose it's just a great shirt it's 7.3 uh, so you know you're paying for it half you know shy of a half pound but it's a button-up. It's got some weight to it. I love the pattern. It fits my color thing. Because that's the other part, man. This is whatever you want to be out there, right? You, you have whatever colors you want to wear, wear your colors, man. It's, uh, it's the wilderness, right? You can be yourself. You can let go of everything else and just rely on your equipment. I think that's the most beautiful thing about going out there you know there's so many things in this world we can't control but we can control ourselves and I, I love this exposure to dangerous environments because it challenges us to become better or be very aware of what's going on you know with resources with with things around you but there's a surprising amount of time that you find there that exists currently but we get drowned out with all the noise in our lives and so you know getting out there away from that noise can help us get back to center um so it's good to it's good to have equipment that you can rely on and stuff that's lasted seven years so this is definitely a nine weighing it at 7.4 is <clears throat> One of my favorite daily wears, the Mountain Hardware Ghost Shadow Insulated Vest in Dark Bolt. But that Dark Bolt to me is green gold. It's just amazing. But the vest itself is similar to other like micro, um, micro down uh, type of jackets. It's a vest, which is cool. So it's kind of funny if you think about the, your wardrobe, you kind of think of expanding uh, layers from your chest to keep that centrally warm so you kind of progressively move throughout the body but this gives you basically the, the, the best chest back torso coverage but still allows you the feel, full use of your limbs um, if you're you know over sweaty if you're walking fast but you know zip up feature is great um, it's lightweight it's 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 a great warm layer uh, it's definitely not wa waterproof though. Uh, you don't want to get this wet. So it's it, it's got a down inside, I believe. Could be could be a poly. Um, not sure, but we'll do the full review, um, individual review on this jacket alone. But uh, real pretty, real fun, uh, great warm piece of uh, clothing. Ooh, you might be saying, oh wow, what is this delicatessen? What is this number ten? This is the Patagonia Men's Houdini Jacket, ultra light windbreaker, weighing in at 3.55 ounces. This is a definite 10. Um, everybody has their own way of rolling this up. I kind of roll it up into the hood and then cinch the hood down. But uh, this is gonna. This is one of those. Just it's, it's just a windbreaker. Um, you can see here's the hood but uh, very thin but made out of this wonderful material that uh, keeps you warm um, and at the same time keeps you uh, dry it's just it's super light it's it's just the colors amazing this is like my favorite color green gold of sorts I don't know if it would be a better of the color there 
get my lights kind of back. So this is my first real video with all this equipment and I haven't even hooked up the mics yet. So audio should improve after this series. But yeah, this is my first string together. I got all these ideas, all these fun stuff, but uh, this is the clothing section. Uh, we're at the Patagonia uh, Houdini jacket and it's a delight. It's super light. You can use this as a long sleeve shirt, realistically, um, and an extra thermal layer underneath, you know, your outer shell. So it doesn't necessarily have to be an external, you know, wind or rain guard, right? A rain jacket, because it functions just as that, but it's got so many other things you can use it for. It's also soft enough. Um, it's just nice, nice little, nice little jacket there. 10 for sure. This orange monster before you at 11.75, 11.8 is a mountain hardware quasar light jacket. It is the best jacket I've ever owned for backpacking. It seems as if this was designed by somebody who knew exactly what I wanted. Uh, it's got high pockets for your hands. Because remember when you're backpacking, you've got a strap across going underneath your navel. And so the high pockets allow you to put gloves and stuff higher up on your chest as opposed to lower on the jacket, right? Um, the zipper itself has a, a, a bifurcation. So you can zip it up full from, from, from bottom all the way to the top, which and stops right beneath your nose with everything cinched down. Um, totally waterproof. Um, but the bottom zipper also, say if you're like climbing, um, if, you, if you need to get to your chalk or if you need to get to a carabiner, it's got a zipper that zips from the bottom up so you can keep your warmth at the top, but also access your belt area. Um, it's a fascinating design. It, the, the material is just out of, it's from another planet. In fact, sorry, I should have swapped that before. This is definitely a 10 and definitely a star. It's, it's a crazy jacket. It's super thin. You wouldn't think it was so warm, but it, it just keeps the heat in. I wore this on, I forget, I don't know if it was Bierstadt, which one I have to re rewind, look the photos, but there was one uh, mountain I climbed. It was sunny. People were in their shorts, t-shirts. It was 75 degrees. And within 200 feet, 400 feet, things started changing towards the top. And we were literally 500 feet from the top of the mountain when this hit. A storm came in and a lot of people started to turn around beforehand. It wasn't too black, um, but it was a storm nonetheless and no no uh, lightning or anything. But it hit and it turned into snow real quick. It turned into a snowstorm. I, I threw my pack down. I, I was already warm. Um, but I only had three layers on. Threw this on that. And I have pictures of myself just standing on the top of that mountain during the middle of a snowstorm with this wind going by me and I felt great. I just felt so warm and I almost felt like I was on the top of a mountain, which I was. Top of a 14er with this thing. So I don't know if I'm going to need it, but I'll tell you what. If it rains and all I have is that Argentina shirt, underneath this thing's in arizona unless it's like you know 40s 50s this thing's going to be too hot so i'll use the the ultralight houdini um windbreaker for for those conditions but if it gets cold to any degree or if anybody else gets cold this thing will warm them up so fantastic jacket i mountain hardware i only have two articles from them i believe but uh, just kind of a well-known brand. I can't fault them. I love the cinch on the whole head area. It just form fits. Everything is just really slim fit too because I'm a slim dude and I need slim stuff to fit. And so I really like that aspect. So, you know, jackets like this have a high, a high, uh, I'd say, like, a, what do you call it? Under pit where the jacket actually comes up high in there so you can get full articulation and move, you know, move around your pack, move your arms, climb while you're in these clothing. So it's meant for full articulation of your body. Um, so that's how these things are kind of form-fitted and, and length is given 
where it's needed for s circumstances where you may be throwing a hammer into a ice or something, an ice pick or whatever, where you need to stretch uh, or reach a boulder or whatever, whatever type of climbing you might be doing. So great piece, great piece, uh, just bright orange, love it. So also really good for visibility on the trail. All right, sock time. Yay, little funny characters. So <clears throat> I got so many of these like kind of the same REI smart wool. They, they all they all kind of look and have the same pattern, so there's nothing unique about them. So they all start blending together, and sometimes it's hard to find the mate because they're very similar, but so it's easy for my wife to misidentify and I'll end up with different weight socks and then just have to, so this this method it's like look at the look at the face on the inside you can't you can't uh, see it when you wear it it's just kind of an interior thing but it helps me organize different eras of socks different brands you know and just kind of see how long they last and you know if you lose a pair you set the partner aside and look for his buddy but it's kind of like that easier way to manage the socks which i know if anybody's like me that happens so anyway socks are fun uh, different weights here. I got basically three sock types, all REI uh, brand. Uh, let's see, we've got the synthetic blend wool socks, medium weight, <clears throat> synthetic blend wool socks, lightweight, and then we've got uh, Eco Made Cool Max liner socks. I've been talked away against these. I've never had an issue. I I do sometimes on long hikes. I'll do this and a wool. And I have not had a problem with blistering or anything, but that's a big factor. And one of my friends at the Grand Canyon just kind of swears by that no cotton uh, under under sock, just go with wool. And he's I've never had an issue with either, but he's got a point. So I may I may just go in without liners and just have it as a secondary sock for around camp. Um, there is dirt and stuff, whatever. You can act like a German tourist with white socks in my weird shoes so anyways it'll be fun but uh this kind of wraps up all of the all right i'm gonna break the wall here for a moment uh certainly long video intention here was to build a catalog get the data compile it uh get everything in a spreadsheet and kind of demonstrate uh the breakdown of how products are organized as well as kind of uh how much everything weighs costs uh, from a retail perspective also give ratings um, and point out products that are star products, uh, products that are ultra light in nature and ultra comfortable in nature. So all those data points um, have been compiled in a spreadsheet and I will show you that right now. So here we have the spreadsheet that I used organize this uh, particular superstitions trip um, updated it it contains all the data points that we just covered in that video um, plus some additional um, information so I, I point out which products require power which are waterproofed or water repellent um, I kind of give a breakdown on what I'm wearing at the top weight of every item retail uh, uh, and then this is for me just to understand the, the number of actual products that are going with me. Um, a rating that I, that, I, that I give on a scale of one to 10. I point out star products. Um, I point out also which products are ultralight and which products are hyper comfortable or uber comfortable. So um, with that being said, we're breaking everything down. Um, there's links to where these things can be found on the internet for you if you're interested in those things. Looking at um, everything, break it down, backpacks, carabiners, uh, water system, cooking food system, sleep system, and then we get into chair, poles, headlamp, batteries, medical and survival kits, personal effects, solar systems and lighting, AV equipment that I brought in, eyeglasses, my art pack, food and trash bag stuff, hats, shirts, jackets, gloves, pants, feet, and at the bottom, what was pulled before we went out on the trail. Um, I also give uh, aggregated totals. All these are currently in ounces. I may do a conversion on that um, 
to also reflect grams for those of you across the water. So this will be available at the top of the page. Uh, please feel free to comment on it, download it. This will represent just this trip. Um, I anticipate that I'll be building upon this to show an evolution of spreadsheet over time. So we'll just see how that plays out. So that about wraps it up for this extremely long video. However, we went through a number of things and uh, compiled a lot of great data. So we talked about uh, the first two steps of any adventure, the, the idea, the plan, and this plan, we're going to the superstitions for a four day, and then all the details within that, the map, uh, who we're meeting, when we're going, uh, the weather, uh, all the things that we talked about, and then culminating in a long kind of preview of each individual product that uh, I'm taking along with me. Now, this whole catalog will serve as a catalog. This whole video will serve as a catalog experience, so to speak, or more of like a survey course uh, where I can then uh, link future videos in this main catalog so that everything's kind of compiled in one place and centralized. So hopefully uh, in the long, long vision of this, you'll be able just to jump from products within um, and then seeing each individual uh, breakdown uh, and analysis on its own, which is much more digestible, I know. So uh, with that being said, I'd love to thank you for spending your time here. Uh, it's rough out there. Love one another.